Welcome back to our presentation on operating on ultra-low sulfur and distillate fuels in the ECA areas. We showed this slide earlier in the presentation where we highlighted some of the operational issues that we anticipate that operators will be faced with. Burning the fuel as such on a main engine is not something that we expect to have any issues uh, when doing. However, we do consider that there may be some operational issues uh, maintaining these fuels on the ships that may have an influence on the main engine. One of these topics is changing the fuel, especially when changing from a heavy fuel to a distillate. This may become a challenge for the crew due to the viscosity and the temperature change. Another uh, issue is the choice of cylinder oil, choosing the right cylinder oil for the application, and viscosity, especially when operating on desolate, where a certain minimum viscosity has to be kept in the fuel system. When operating on ultra-low sulfur fuels, removal of cat fines, tank system considerations, and incompatibility between the fuels also becomes uh, some issues that we would like to address in this presentation. Beginning with the choice of the right cylinder oil for the application. This slide here shows the relationship between cylinder oil feed rate and line aware. As you can see from this slide, uh, a high feed rate will give you a very low line aware rate, whereas a low feed rate will give you a higher wear rate due to coke corrosion. Talking about coke corrosion using 0.1 sulfur fuels is not an issue. However, the very low wear rates that you will obtain with high feed rates or over alkalinity in the cylinder oil will become a big issue when operating on 0.1 sulfur fuels. You will retain a very low wear rate to the liners and eventually it will start to polish up the liner surface and this will subsequently lead to the high risk of having a liner scuffing. And that scuffing will wear out the cylinder liner within a couple of days. It's therefore very important to maintain the lowest possible feed rate uh, for the application and choosing the right cylinder oil to avoid having a higher risk of having liner polish. You can also measure this when looking at the drain oil. When taking a drain oil sample from an engine operating within the 0.1 sulfur uh, ECA area, you will see that if you're using a 70 BN cylinder oil as seen on this slide, uh, the BN in the residual oil coming out from the engine will be about 60 to 50 BN, meaning that the cylinder oil has not been used and you are actually faced with the risk of having a line of polish. There is a number of different types and brands of oils which are, have been made and which are adequate for this use. Um, we s you see here a list of the brands which have is been issued with a no objection letter from our side, meaning that they can be used on our engines. And on this graph here, you see a selection guide to try and assist in the right choice of the cylinder oils. Any engine operating today needs a cylinder oil for high sulfur operation. Uh, for this use, uh, most engines, Mark 8 and newer, will need a 100 BN cylinder oil due to the high level of coke corrosion on these engines. Whereas a Mark 7 engine and less may not actually need a 100 BN oil. Normally they can make do with a 70 BN oil, but if there has been any um, upgrades to fuel uh, efficiency, meaning turbocharger cutout or derating of the engine, the corrosive level will increase and this will also give grounds for moving into 100 BN cylinder oils for this application also with high sulfur fuels. However, for all engine types, Mark 8, 9, 10 or lower, they will all need a ultra-low BN cylinder oil when operating on 0.1. When you change the cylinder oil, you also have to address the feed rate factor. The calculation shown here shows how to do this calculation between the, the feed rate factors. You do this by multiplying the current uh, feed rate factor with the fraction of the BN levels. For example, seen here is a 70 BN oil using a feed rate factor of 0.34 and by multiplying it with the fraction you get the new ACC factor for the 25 BN cylinder oil. When using this very high feed rate factor with a 0.1 sulfur fuel, the basic feed rate will be the minimum feed rate as when you multiply the high number with 0.1 you get a number which is less than 0.6. So you will be using uh, the minimum feed rate when operating in the acre area. 
When we look at the viscosity of the fuel, this is also an issue, especially when operating on distillate. Our engine require a minimum viscosity of 2 centistoke, um, and as the viscosity of distillate is much lower than the viscosity of heavy fuels, uh, it requires that the fuel system temperature remains very low when operating on distillates. The slide that you see here shows the correlation between temperature and viscosity uh, on the distillate. In the bottom axis, you can see the viscosity measured at 40 degrees. This is a value that can be found on the fuel analysis. And on the vertical axis is the temperature in the fuel system, which can be read inside the engine room. In the graph area, it's possible to determine what the actual viscosity of to the distillate is in the fuel system. And with this, it's possible to avoid getting into the gray area between 3 and 2 centistoke, where there is a risk of having seizures inside the fuel pumps. We've done tests at our test engine, and we know that when you obtain 1.7 to 1.5 centistoke, you actually get seizures. So remaining above 2 centistoke is very important when operating on distillate. It's therefore very important to have some kind of fuel cooling in the fuel system. Especially when operating doing maneuvers, the temperature will start to increase because the distillate is recirculated in the system. And here, a fuel, cool, fuel cooler is crucial to maintain a steady temperature in the system and avoid having any safety issues with the fuel pumps. Because of the high price of distillates, the fuel suppliers have come up with a number of alternative products for use in the ECA areas. These are called ultra-low sulfur fuels. And they are, in fact, taken from different streams within the refinery process. Some of these are heavy distillates, others are mixed products. Uh, and key for all of them are that they are aromatic in, in composition and with holes and high levels of wax within them, and therefore can cause some problems when mixed with other fuels, such as heavy fuel or distillates, actually. This raises the concern for some of the operational issues Maintaining these fuels on the ship, this is by removing cat finds, which will also be something that may be found inside these ultra-low sulfur fuels. Tank considerations due to the high pour points, some of these will need heating during storage, and compatibility between the existing fuels on the ship, where there may be issues with clogging filters and so on. On this slide here, you can see some characteristics for these fuels, and as you can see, the pore point, viscosity, and the cat fine contents is something that gives concern and needs to be addressed when using these fuels on the main engine. Cat fine needs to be removed as they need for all fuels, being a heavy fuel or an ultra-low sulfur fuel. All the cat fines in the fuel has to be removed before it's used on the main engine. Otherwise, there will be damage to the ring wear, to the uh, piston ring grooves and the piston crowns, and the liner wear. High pour points may lead to the wax precipitating from the distillates, and this will cause clocking of filters, and clocking of systems, and the sludge in the storage tanks. It's therefore important to have some kind of heating inside these storage tanks used for these ultra-low sulfur fuels. This slide shows a simplified sketch of a typical, likely, storage system for fuel oils on a seagoing vessel. Seen here is on top a heavy fuel system and on bottom the desolate system, which are two separate systems usually on most ships. When using ultra-low sulfur fuels and if they are stored inside the desolate system, this raises the concern of being able to clean the fuels because the separator in the desolate system is usually smaller in capacity and the heating is also usually less than it is for the heavy fuel. Desolates are usually not heated more than 50 degrees, whereas the ultra-low sulfur fuels will most likely need to be heated to 70 to 98 degrees to be cleaned probably from cat finds. And the capacity will also be decreased on the separator because of the higher viscosity in the ultra-low sulfur fuels. It may therefore be advisable to make piping to utilize the heavy fuel separators when using these fuels to make sure that there's adequate cleaning of the fuels before use. For those who are not familiar with the term of cat finds, cat finds are remnants from the refining process where the catalysts are used to break down the oils to lighter fragments such as distillates. And these is usually retained inside the residual fuel, which is 
then sold on to ships as bunker fuel. These cat finds are very small in size of 2 microns to 20 microns um, and they're very hard as the grinding paste particles and they need to be removed from any fuel oil before pumped into the main engine. To make sure that you have an adequate cleaning, it's very important to always address your separator function on the ship. It's important that the separators are clean, that there is no sludge inside that will retain the particles and it's important that the temperature is high enough and that it's not fluctuating because of insufficient heaters. It's also important to have the throughput through the separators as small as possible and run the separators in parallel to make sure that they have a better cleaning. We advise that the throughput of fuel through the separators is equivalent to the engine consumption plus a small surplus to make sure that fuel is always recirculated from the day tank back to the settling tank to make sure that the day tank is cleaned because of the overflow pipe which sucks uh, the dirty oil from the bottom of the day tank. Our guideline for the maximum allowable level of cat fines at the engine inlet was stated in service letter in 2005 452. Here we stated that if the fuel bunker contained 80 milligrams per kilogram of cat fines, the maximum allowable limit at engine inlet were to be no higher than 15 milligrams per kilogram. Subsequently, we also expected that if the bunker fuel contained less than 80 milligrams per kilogram of cat fines, we also expected to have less cat fines at engine inlet. Later on, the ISO spec has been uh, changed, and today the maximum allowable level of cat fines at bunker fuel is 60 milligrams per kilogram and therefore we have revised our limit to 10 milligrams per kilogram corresponding to the same level of, of cleaning as we had in the previous recommendation. Of course, keeping cat fines in the fuel always will have an impact on the engine wear. It's best to remove them all completely to avoid having any impact of the wear parts such as piston rings, ring grooves and liner wear. Non-compatible fuels is also an issue that will come up with these ultra-low sulfur fuels as they have a different nature than the current heavy fuels and distillates on the ships. There may be problems when mixing them together. This can be tested on board by relatively simple testing and we advise that all bunkered fuels are tested before use to make sure that there isn't any problems using them on the ship. And it may also be advisable to do a simple test of actually just mixing the fuels in a, a container on board and shaking it to see whether there will be precipitation of wax or asphalt teens that may cause filter clocking. Another problem with this non-compatible fuels is the drain from the fuel pumps. There is a continuous drain from the fuel pumps on the main engine and traditionally this drain is led into a drain tank which is then pumped back into the heavy fuel settling tank. When operating on ultra low sulfur fuels or desolates, this means that you will continuously be uh, polluting your heavy fuel settling tank unless you have made alterations to the piping to make sure that you can pump this uh, ultra low sulfur drain back into the ultra low sulfur day tank. Our latest recommendations for these drain tanks is to actually have two drain tanks uh, in the ship to be able to use the appropriate drain tank for the appropriate fuel. To summarize the presentation we've given, it is important to use low B and cylinder oils. It's important to have an adequate fuel system with coolers to be able to maintain a minimum viscosity. In case of using ultra low sulfur fuel oils, it's important to ensure fuel cleaning. It's important to avoid mixing the fuels in the storage tanks. It's important to avoid mixing them in the drain tanks. And for starting problems, it's very important to make sure that the fuel pumps are not worn and always to have uh, adequate spares on the ship in case they need to be replaced before going into ICA. Also remember to test the starting capability before you go into port to make sure that the problem doesn't occur during maneuvers. For ships continuously operating in the air carrier, we also advise to change the piston rings to full thermal coated piston ring packages to reduce the risk of getting a seizure that will cause an immediate need for overhauling of the main engine. If you have further questions to the topic that we have addressed here, 
then please study the service letter from 2014 593 or drop us an email on the email shown here. Thank you for your time.